Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Medzone African Motives. Uh, still on our mathematics and four, and uh, we shall have our integration. Uh, that is uh, a revision and see how we are supposed to attempt uh, these typical questions. As we can see that our integration is still the same and it's just a matter of different types of questions that you just need to work on as an individual to make sure that you understand all about your integration. Uh, so we shall quickly rush through our questions as we are seeing here. Uh, remember, as I always say that if you are given this type of a question, you are supposed to write in a way that you are supposed to integrate. So that is the basic format, all right? Our standard integrals. Do we have the integral of sec squared from our standard integrals? Uh, I mentioned about that. If you check from your formula sheet, I talked about uh, these standard integrals uh, that we are given, talking about the, the sine, the cos, the tan, and so forth. And also knowing that our integration, it plays a big role as it is uh, the reverse of the derivatives, all right? It is the reverse of our derivatives. Remember, we were differentiating here to obtain this. So if we integrate this part that we are having, this side, we are supposed to obtain the other hand if we integrate this with respect to, with respect to x. So that is, we are supposed to also consider that in our simplification. So as we can see, a sec squared is there. So that means this is uh, this is in simplest form. Uh, actually here, uh, if we check, this is in simplest form, only this part, uh, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. So we just have to consider this, guys. I'm not going to rewrite everything. Uh, let us just consider this. This is same as what? 3x to the exponent of what? Of negative three. Uh, remember from our laws of exponents, this is in the denominator to write it in the numerator is gonna carry a negative. All right, so let us integrate each and every part here. I'm just gonna write the answer guys. Like I said, uh, we need this the integral of a sec, a sec squared seven X. So if we consider how we are given here, I want us to see, uh, I want us to talk about this so that we, we just uh, consider our simplification. We said it is the reverse of the derivative. Remember, when we differentiated a tan, in this case, we obtained this sec squared, when we differentiate a tan. So meaning to say, if we integrate as sec squared x with respect to x, our answer is supposed to be a tan x. All right, but if we consider what we have here, I want you to see the difference or what we consider. We, there is a number that is affecting, which is a seven. It's true that if we integrate, it's true that we, if, if we integrate a sec squared, a sec squared x with respect to x, it is going to give us what? Uh, it is going to give us a tan, like what we saw, a tan x. But it follows that if this is a, if, we, if there is a term here, let's say this is a sec squared ax, this is going to be tan ax over a, all right? So take note here, it's going to be tan a, ax over a, which is the coefficient of what? Of x, like the derivative of what? Of x plus the constant of our integration. So it means this part here, since there is a seven here, this is going to be tan, gonna have this as uh, tan ax, that is our a is seven. So it's going to be tan uh, seven x, everything over seven, which is our, uh, the presentation of what? Of the a. That is the idea of the question there. All right, so let us consider, all right, uh, I want this part, I don't want to erase this, I still need this. All right. Uh, then we've got uh, minus three, it's a constant. Remember the integral of a constant with respect to the variable that you're given is simply the product uh, of that constant with the variable that you're integrating with respect to, with respect to what? With respect to X, so it's just the product of the two. Okay, then we move on to this, the integral of, so we've got a three X to the exponent of negative three, all right? Remember our integral, if X is being raised to a, a, a certain uh, number representing, an, representing a constant, that's a number there. The integration part we have to add. So we're going to add one on our exponent. So that means we are going to obtain this as three X. If we add one, this will be a negative uh, two and we divide by this new exponent. In actual sense, we're supposed to write like minus three plus one, which is the same as this. So you're going to divide by what? By a negative two, which is the new exponent that we have here. So this is the same as we've got three 
uh, negative, we can even write it on top. So it's the same as we put minus three over two, x to the exponent of minus two. And take note, x is carrying a negative exponent. It is referred, it is having a negative exponent, just like what we had here. It was having a positive, then we wrote it on top with a negative exponent so that we can be able to simplify. Now that we have integrated, what are we going to do? We're going to remove this negative, write the same way as it was before. Yes, you can leave it like that, but just try to simplify further. So it's minus 3 over 2. If we take this x down, because it has got a negative exponent, it's going to be taken as what? Minus 3 over 2x squared. Just like what it was, it was x to the exponent of 3. Then we said it's going to carry a negative. So if it has got a negative, how do we write it? We write it in the denominator. So this is going to be written in the denominator. So that is uh, the integral of the whole of this part. So that means we've got a plus and a minus. So what are we going to have at the end? A plus and a minus is going to give us a minus. So that's minus uh, 3 over 2 x to the exponent of 3. Uh, x to the exponent of a 2. So this is x to the exponent of a 2. That is the idea there. So if you are integrating, you have to be very, very careful of your simplification. How uh, do you integrate? All right. Then we've got three cosec x cot x. All right. We have this from our standard integrals. Uh, actually, you're not given this direct, but from our derivatives. All right. Like I said, uh, the integration part is the reverse of the derivative. We have the part of a cosec and a cot. But on this end, it's a negative. It's a negative there. There is given as a positive. So what do you do? To write this as a positive, this one, you introduce a negative on the other side. So you just introduce a negative. This becomes a positive. So we are saying the integral of this positive cosec x cot x with respect to x is going to give us this minus cosec x plus what? The constant of integration, the reverse of the what? The derivative. So the answer is supposed to be minus uh, cosec x in that case, right? So let us check uh what we have here so there is a plus so the plus plus and minus is going to be a minus the three that we are having is not on the cosec or on the cot it's just a constant that we are having this three so it's just going to be minus three all right uh remember we said we are supposed to obtain what a cosec so that's a cosec x then we have got this part all right we've got uh, uh negative uh, 3 to the exponent of negative 3x like this. How do we uh, actually integrate this? So like I said, if we are to consider the way the formula is given from our formula sheet, it is a, uh, a halfway given. Uh, I always consider that you're supposed to take it this way, the integral of k, a to the exponent of f of x with respect to x is equal to what? Say this is going to remain as it is, then we find the derivative of f of x. So this is going to be over the derivative of f of x times the lean of the base, which is the lean of a. So that is how you're supposed to integrate such. All right. So in this case, we do not have like the constant. This is just three. We, like we have got a one there. The number that is affecting like the constant, if there was a two, you're going to write a two. So there is just a one. So this does not even affect us at all that we've got what? A one. So we're just going to have this as the integral of this is, uh, the integral of this is going to be this part, which is ka to the exponent of f of x. This is going to remain as it is, three to the exponent of minus three x over the first derivative. We need the first derivative of our f of x. This is our f of x, which is minus 3x. What is the derivative of this? The derivative of this is a negative 3. Remember, guys, we're talking about minus 3x. So you take what? The constant, which is minus 3, times the lean of a, which is the lean of the best. The best, the number that is affecting our exponent is 3. a to the exponent, the best there is what? Is 3. So it's going to be the lean of 3. So take note. This is just as a to the exponent of f a. So our a is 3. So it's going to be lean of a, which is lean of what? Of 3. So that is what you're going to have in this case. But if we consider this, there is already a negative that we are given here. So this negative and this negative was going to affect each other. So it's going to be a plus. So that's 3 uh, to the exponent of minus 3x, everything over 3, uh, lean of 3. Remember I said 
the negative that was on the original question, this one, and the negative that we are obtaining from our integral, it gives us what? A plus at the end, all right? So that was the idea of the question. So you have to understand the integral of each and every part, the basics of each uh, part. So if you consider this, you're going to see that it is the same. Uh, I have already like removed my formula, but it's the same thing like this part of E. It is the same consideration there. If you are working with E, it is the same as the three, all right? Because X is on the what? X is affected on the, uh, on the exponent. As long X is on the exponent, just like minus this part that we had. So how are we going to integrate such? All right, if we are given E, the, the procedure is the same. So you're going to apply the same way or the same process, just like what we had on this part. All right, uh, let us have this. Okay, uh, sorry for that. Just gonna have this here. So you're gonna need the integral of this part. All right, uh, guys, sorry for that. All right, so this one. So like I said, we're gonna need the this, we're gonna take as it is, there's a negative already. So let's just put a negative this one, all right? This time there's a constant, which is three. So we said we are supposed to have, remember K, A to the exponent of F of X over the first derivative uh, times the lean of A, the first derivative here. So this is what we have here, three times E to the exponent of minus three X. This is our original expression over the first derivative now, the first derivative of the f of x. This is this your f of x, just like minus 3x what we had. So what is the first derivative of this? That is what? A negative 3. So you're going to obtain a negative 3 times the lean of a, which is the number that is affecting here, a to the exponent a, our best, our best there is what? It's e, e to the exponent of minus. So the best there is what? It's e. So it is going to be the lean of e. But we know that the lean of E is equivalent to what we talked about this, that lean of E is equivalent to one. Whenever you see the lean of E, you're going to put what? A one. So this is a one. So this and this was going to cancel. Uh, so we remain with uh, minus E to the exponent of minus three exponents. This is what? A one. So the minus here and the minus here, what is going to happen? It is going to give us a positive minus minus. That's a positive. So that's positive e to the exponent of uh, minus 3x. So that is what we were going to have at the end, all right? So guys, like I said, you are supposed to know how to integrate each term, each and every term. So we are done. There's nothing left there. So now we can write our constant, the constant of integration at the end. So that is how we integrate each and every part that we are given. Uh, we are supposed to show uh, if it is seven marks, it means we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are supposed to show all these uh, seven stages that we're having all these, uh, this part to integrate each and every part properly to obtain uh, the seven marks. All right, uh, let's consider the second part, which is 5.2. On 5.2, we are given to sketch and indicate uh, the area, we need to sketch this and indicate the area enclosed by the graph of y is equal to 2e to the x, uh, 2e, this is 2 times 3, not e, guys, this is 2 times 3. All right, it's like this. Uh, that is a 5.2. We are given it's y is equal to 2 times 3 to the exponent of 2x. So that is uh, uh, the same or the way that we present an exponential function. This is an exponential function, just like the graph of y is equal to two times e to the exponent of three x, or two times uh, e to the exponent of four x, just the same way, an exponential function. Remember the sketch, we are now uh, on integration, but you're just supposed to have a sketch. And here we are supposed to indicate the x-axis, all right, where it is going to be enclosed by the x-axis, the y-axis and this. All right, so let us first uh, show or have a sketch of our exponential function. Remember I said, uh, when you are working with an exponential function, if this is a positive, we are going to have it in this way, increasing in terms of the y values uh, as we are having our x. As x is decreasing, y values are decreasing. If it is a negative, we are going to have it on the other side like this. That's how you have our exponential function. So we just ought to understand our sketch, right? Or if you do not understand, just try to have values. You can try negative three, negative. You're gonna have 
smaller values from negative three like this, all right, this is our Cartesian plan. If you put in your values on the calculator uh, from, uh, let's say, negative three, negative two, negative one, we are going to have the smaller values as x, the smaller values as they, as, as the values of x are getting closer to zero, the y values are increasing, increasing as they are positive, the y values are also increasing and so on. So that is a, what our curve or the function is supposed to be or, or is supposed to look like. That is 2e, uh, 2 times 3 to the exponent of 2x. That is the function that we have. So we are told that this is supposed to be enclosed by what? It is supposed to be enclosed by the graph, all right? The x-axis, so meaning to say the part that we need is supposed to be of the graph, the x-axis. So we are left with the region, this one. This is the region that we are left with in between, be in between, enclosed, the graph and the x-axis. But in between these two points, we are now given also the two other boundaries, the y-axis and the line x is equal to 3. All right, so meaning to say the last part is, is, con is, is considered by the y-axis. This is our y-axis. Remember, the y-axis is the line of what? Of x is equal to 0. And the other line that you're given is the line of what? x is equal to 3. At a point where x is equal to 3, we are also given that as a boundary. So which area is left enclosed, covered by all the conditions? This is the region that we are having here. This is the region in between every part here. So that is the area, that is the, the region that we are supposed to calculate our area uh, where it is enclosed. And we are also uh, we are also given here to also indicate the representative strip. This is the representative strip to be used to calculate the enclosed area. So as you can see, our area with the limits that we are given in the x-axis, our representative strip is going to be for the x-axis. For area, I said, the representative strip, uh, actually we shall see the change of this when it comes to volume in our mathematics N6. But for now, this is what you need to know. The limits that you are given, they represent the strip. The limits here are for what? Uh, for X, we are given the limits for X from zero up to three. So the strip will be for, for X, meaning to say, we're gonna have the representative strip for for x for the x values with respect to x because we are have we are having the limits for for x. If you were given a condition where you've got drawn something of this nature, all right, and the limits are taken for the y values, you've got a point here and a point here. It's for the y values, meaning to say the strip is in this case is going to be what for the y values because the limits are for y. So the limits are the ones that represent or that determines the strip for now, all right? Uh, like, like, like I said, for, for now, because we shall see uh, the changes later on. But for area, it's like that, all right? It, it is only for volume later on in N6, we shall talk about uh, some other formulas there. All right, anyways, let us see 5.22. Now we are now asked to calculate using integration, the value of the enclosed area. So the area is simply the integral of what you're given. And if you've forgotten this, all right, so let me indicate proper. This is 5.21 of sketching the graph. It was 5.21. Uh, then 5.22, we now have to calculate what? Uh, the area. So the limits are for X. So it's going to be the area with respect to X. So like I said, if you've forgotten this, check your formula sheet. Everything you are given there about the area, the area with respect to X is the integral of Y with respect to X given the limits a and b. So what does this part mean? The integral of y with respect to x, that is the presentation of what? Of our area. So you're saying the integral of y with respect to x with our limits a and b. All right, this is what it means. Y is the expression that we are given of, a, it's a function in terms of x with respect to x. This is the y in terms of what? In terms of x. So where we see why we're going to substitute this this part that carries x because we are supposed to perform our integral with respect to what? With respect to x. So that means in this case, we are going to have our solution as the integral of y in this case, like I said, is the what? Function of x. And what is our function of x? It is two times three to the exponent of two x. We integrate with respect to x. A and B being the limits in the x-axis, the boundaries that we're having, the lower limit and the upper limit, which are the boundaries of the bounded of or, or what? This region that is covered here. 
the boundaries from 0 to from 0 to 3. So these are the boundaries that you're given from 0 to from 0 to 3. So this is what we have. Just like that. So if you are to check or if you are to consider this, you're going to see this whole part that we are having here is a repetition of this part. We integrated such a, a, a type of an expression here. We talked about this, all right? If you consider here, we integrated something of that nature on these integrals. All right, let us see this part. We integrated something of this nature. This is the same part that we are having here, all right? So it's just the application of our integration. So we said, how do we integrate this? All right, let me just rewrite our formula. Uh, we said we are given uh, the integral of k a to the exponent of f of x uh, with respect to x. It is going to give us k a to the exponent of f of x. I'm going to write this formula until you understand it. The first derivative of f of x times the lean of a plus the cost of integration. So that is how we integrate this, all right? So meaning to say, on our integrals, in this case, we are going to consider this uh, this part, Ka, as it is. This is this is the one that we're having here. So we are going to have uh, 2 times 3 to the exponent of 2x. This is our Ka to the exponent of, of f of x. Over what? The first derivative of our f of x. The first derivative, this is our f of x. What is its derivative? The derivative of this function, the derivative of 2x is what? That's a two, all right? Consider what? The constant is a linear expression there times the lean of A, the lean of what? The best, A is the best there, the best, the number here, the best, which is three. So it's gonna be the lean of three. So as you can see, these two, they cancel, they're the same. So it means after integrating this, we are going to remain with this part, three to the exponent of two X, everything over the lean of three. As I said before, whenever the limits are considered, there's no need for us to write what? The constant of integration, just substitute uh, your limits because remember you will subtract them later on. So C minus C, the constant, it, it, you just subtract itself, it's just gonna cancel. So there's no need for us to consider that. So this is the idea there. This is the idea. The integral of what you're given, are you given the function of a course? Are you given an exponential function? Are you given a quadratic function? What function are you given? The first thing is you're supposed to know how to sketch that function. You're back now to the sketching of the graphs. Remember, we had that part as a topic on its own to sketch your functions. You're supposed to know this also from our N3 revisions. Can we also try to recap our exponential, every type of a function that we did from N3? Now you can find our final answer by substituting upper limit minus the lower limit. Upper limit being three. So if you substitute here in place of X, uh, guys, two times three is what? It's a six. So this will be three to the exponent of six over the lean of three. We substituted here three to the exponent of two times three like this in place of X. So this one, it gives us a six. All right, minus, uh, we substitute zero times two. That is two times zero is what? Three to the exponent of zero over the lean of three. So there we can just use our calculator uh, as usual. Uh, this is now a direct part that we can even use our, we can properly see this, or we can properly use our calculator to simplify this. We are going to obtain something like uh, 662,654157, something like that, uh, which is to three decimal places. Uh, if we round off to three decimal places, it's going to be 662,654. Uh, the one cannot change this for, so it will be 654. Uh, this is area, and we know that area is measured in what? It is measured in square units, or you can write this as square units in short. So that is how we are supposed to obtain uh, the area, the enclosed area of the given uh, function, and the part that is enclosing that area is simply the integral area with respect to, to x. So if it was, uh, because now we can have questions that will ask you to calculate the area with respect to y. If it is with respect to y, it means our formula is gonna be the integral of x with respect to y with the limits c to d. So we're gonna have a condition of this nature whereby this or x axis or y axis, and we're gonna have uh, something of this nature, the limit of y, and this is our c, and this is our d. So that is, uh, how are we gonna have our area now, given the limits that are in the Y taken as C and D? So we have to be 
uh, aware of anything now. You have to be aware of this also. Okay, so let us consider uh, this. All right, so that is uh, what we're given here. And uh, 5.3, uh, I think this is now clear. Uh, again, it's just an application of our, our integrals, then the limits there, just like the previous case of the area. You just have to integrate whatever that you're given, uh, then uh, apply your limits. So you're given the limits pi over four zero, and this is two sine uh, of two theta with respect to theta. So if we consider the integral of a sine, uh, if we consider this, we do not have direct, uh, or we have got it here directly a sine, uh, it's minus cos. But like I said, if there is a number like this, if you consider that there's a number like this, you divide by that number that you're given. So we saw that a sine is going to give us a negative cos. So it's going to be like this, negative two, uh, cos of two theta, we divide by the number affecting, which is what, which is two, which is two in this case, all right? So that is the consideration when you are given a number. So that's pi over four zero, just like what we had on this one, where there was a sec squared seven X. We saw that when integrating, we ended up dividing by seven. So the constant affecting X or it's theta or it's Y, whatever that you're given, you divide by it. So at the end, that is gonna cancel here. And we are left with minus cos two theta with our limits in this case taken from uh, zero to pi over four. So in place of theta, we are going to substitute pi over four. So this is two times uh, pi over four. This is gonna cancel and that will be pi over two. So instead guys, this is just gonna write as minus. If we substitute the upper limit, uh, if we multiply this, we're gonna get pi over two. So that's minus cos. Uh, pi over two, we subtract uh, the lower limit when this is a zero here, two times zero is what? Theta is a zero, so two times zero is a, it's a zero, so that's minus cos of what? Minus cos of zero. So making sure that our calculator is in a radiance because of this pi, or we have to convert, remember pi is equivalent to what? 180 degrees. So if you're given pi over two, it means what? We divide by two, we divide by two also. So it's going to be 90 degrees if you are to use this in degrees. But if you use this as it is like this with pi, make sure that your calculator is changed to radians. All right? Change your calculator to, to radians. So you will obtain the exact thing or just change this pi uh, over two to what? To degrees. Still it's one and the same thing. So if you are to simplify this, we are going to obtain a one at the end. So that is how... Uh, our questions can be given. You have to be careful in your simplification. All right. Um, I think this was uh, direct. We just have to consider working with more of uh, these uh, typical questions in our in our simplification. Uh, then on 5.4, it was another integral question, which is uh, to integrate the whole of this part. It is a fraction. And as you can see, it's impossible for us to actually integrate this direct. It's impossible. So what can we do? We know that uh, from, our, from our trig, right? This is what we have. We know that one over a tan of X is equivalent to a cot X. So it is the vice versa. If I use this now to say one over a cot of X, it must be a vice versa to give us what? a tan of x. So, knowing this, it can help us to simplify like this part. This is the integral of three is just a constant. So it's just gonna write three. So it's just like I've got one over cot. Take note, one over cot, which we said is what? A tan, just like the opposite of one over tan, which is a cot. So one over cot becomes a tan. So this is going to be three tan of X. What about one over cos? One over cos, guys, we know this one is direct. It's what? It's a sec. So this is sec X with respect to X. If it was one over sine, one over sine X is what? It's cosec. This is the one that gives us what? Cosec X. But one over cos is what? A sec. So this is where we are. Tan X, sec X. The question is, do we have the standard integral of this? Do we have the equivalent of this tan x sec x? Let's check. 
All right, I'm gonna go back to our formula sheet and see if we've got uh, this. From these ones that we have this side, we do not have here. All right, we do not have such. So we go back to that idea that we used before that integration is the reverse of what? The derivative. So if we check, we've got a sec x here and a tan x, which was taken from the derivative of a sec x. So what it means, like I said, if we integrate this sec x tan x with respect to x, our answer is going to be what? A sec x plus c. So meaning to say we have the answer for this integral of a sec tan. It's only here it's given as tan sec. It's the same thing, sec tan. We're going to get what? A sec. So this will be 3 sec of x from the integral of this. But 3 times this is just what? 3 sec x. All right? plus the constant of integration. So that is uh, how we can uh, simplify uh, these typical questions. That's integration. So we shall see more questions to come uh, from MedZone African Motives. Like I said, it is best that we join the membership family so that we do not have uh, limited uh, to our revision. It is good that we join uh, the membership platform uh, as it helps us also to have more content, more videos each and every day because of the support that you're putting to us, uh, that you're giving to this family of Mezzon African Motives. So let us uh, join the membership if you are new, uh, introduce someone to the membership and also tell someone about the benefits of being a member of the Mezzon African Motives. But for now, guys, that's it from Mezzon African Motives till we meet again.